When making a game, having good sound design is very important. Do it right and you're able to make the player feel strong emotions from the sound alone. While music also plays a major role in a game's sound, that's not what I'm here to talk about right now. I'm more concerned about the boops, the beeps, and the- Minecraft is a prime example of good sound design. The game sounds how it looks. From running on dirt to placing dirt blocks to taking damage, the game manages to put this blocky texture on its sound, with some sounds being sharper or more muted depending on what's happening. Good and memorable sounds are not only going to keep your player playing, but it will help bring emphasis to a player's actions. Here, let's play a game. I'm going to play a few sounds or even a string of sounds with no visuals and you're going to try and guess what action I'm doing. I'll play the first two sounds twice. If you can tell me what that last one is, especially, I'll, I, nothing, you, you get a gold star. What I'm trying to get at is, even though these are three pretty different events, the game manages to keep the sound style similar with their crunchy texture. Okay, look, I know I'm throwing made up terms at you, and I'm expecting you to know what they mean, but I really don't know how else to describe it. What I'm trying to say is the block game manages to look like a block game all the time. Most of the time. Minecraft does have a few instances where it forgets its own sound rules, but a few of them are pretty understandable, like the sound of gliding or the inner dragon flapping its wings. Those are sounds where I can understand why they weren't uh, Minecraftified. Because how about you go making air sound blocky? I'm sorry. But there are other times where I wish the sound was more Minecrafty. Like how come when I'm in the nether, surrounded by things and monsters that constantly want to end my life, over a pit of lava with no more than six potatoes, Minecraft decides it wants to hit me with a... Like it's not fair man. Or when I'm hundreds of blocks underground with only the sounds of my footsteps to fill the silence and who knows what lurking in the darkness. Okay. Minecraft hits me with the- Or even worse, it hits me with the- Has anybody talked about how eerie caving really is? But anyways, that's kind of what I mean with this video. Through sound effects alone, Minecraft is able to trigger different emotions, whether it be happy, scared, sad, or even a complete sense of achievement. I think Daniel Rosenfeld, also known by his alias C418 or C418, who worked on Minecraft's original sound and music has this down to a science. It's pretty interesting to learn about how these sounds came about. During April of last year, the 20,000 Hertz podcast had an episode with Daniel Rosenfeld on it. They discussed things like how music in Minecraft was made and why the way it is. I put a lot of my information from this podcast, but I definitely recommend the episode to anyone who's interested. It's only 30 minutes and it's full of fun facts, which I won't be covering here. The, the links in the in the link box. When I went back to go and listen to some of the sound effects for the video, I had a hard time trying to figure out how they were created. I thought most of them were created from scratch, but that isn't the case. You see, when Notch approached C418, they were both very small and poor creators. Notch didn't have the money to go hire some big time musician and C418 didn't even have the money to afford premium sound effects to work with. C418 had to download some of his sounds from freesound.org and work with what was there. But with those free sounds and a few homemade sounds, he managed to make one of the greatest and memorable original soundtracks of all time. There are some sound effects that you already likely know the origins of, like how creeper explosions are just gunshots pitched down with some extra sound effects to give it the crunch. Or that the zombie sound is just Daniel with the flu gargling into a mic also pitched down. <laughs> or the one that everybody knows, the gas, which is just Daniel's cat pitched up and warped a little bit.
but there are a few facts I didn't know that I find really bizarre and interesting. Or, instead of walking around in real snow to get the snow walking sound effect, which Daniel did try, he instead opted to go with crunching a bag of cornstarch because it sounded much more like snow than actual real snow. And speaking of walking sound, you know what, I'm just gonna let Daniel take this one. Originally, we had footstep sounds from free sound, and they were awful footstep sounds. Walking on grass sounded like eating Cheerios. What Marcus did to signify the you're digging now effect is whenever you dig something, he made the footstep sound play fast in repetition, like crunch, 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 crunch. And that was satisfying. That was really satisfying. And the footsteps I replaced with something that was more footsteppy. Like, isn't that interesting and creative? Sadly, Daniel doesn't do music or sounds for the game anymore. In fact, he hasn't done anything from the game since the 1.16 update. We don't really know how or why, but Daniel said things just got complicated. But no matter who comes to fill his shoes, no one can do it quite like C418, Daniel Rosenfeld. Okay, look, see, that would have been a sick place to end the video, like, woo, roll credits, but I only talked about the sound effects here, and I'm really down to make a video about Minecraft's music. <laughs> what? When? Was it recent? Can I s- Huh. Well, now my outro's ruined. Wait, hold on. I got this. No one can do it quite like C418, Daniel Rosenfeld.